Thank you for taking time for him. Tonight on our show, we have a very unusual and a unique guest. Unusual in the sense that he has spent a lifetime defending the sanctuary of the individual and trying to bring, it, bring, bring about the importance that government stays out of the individual's life and the individual's allowed to make their own choices. Brent is a futurist. He's able to foresee farther down the road than many of his contemporaries and tries his best to bring forth his knowledge and his insights. Please welcome on our show, Dr. Timothy Leary. Well, Casper, it's a pleasure to be here. I uh, approve very highly of your program. I understand it's growing nationwide now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many uh, cities are you in now? At present, we're in 80 cities and in 44 states. Oh, boy, that's good. And uh, I, getting the word out like this is very exciting. Uh, now, you've always been known as the highest rider of every generational wave. The what? The highest rider of every generational wow. wave. You've been the forefront, you've been there from, from the World War II to okay. the early 60s, yeah. the 70s, yeah. able to, you know, speak the voice and be heard mm -hmm. and foresee it. Realizing this, how do you think the wave of the hemp movement is going to settle into the population and, and break upon the, the uh, shores of our ecology problems? Break of the shores or ecology problem. Yes, sir. I can see yet yeah, oceans of green hemp doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the present laws against hemp, I think, are the most uh, irrational and uh, I would say almost insane pieces of uh, puritanic leg legislation. Maybe you have to go back to the Salem witchcraft trials to get something where so much hysteria. Okay has picked out something so benign and so harmless and so profitable and so productive and had this all-out uh, moral, fierce, religious uh, campaign against uh, hemp. Uh, why do you think that uh, there is this uh, religious, fundamentalist, and police government uh, prejudice against hemp? Well, how do you explain it? My personal views, that I feel that it stems from a lot of the uh, well, oil companies and the people who can make money off it being illegal, keeping it illegal, mm -hmm. and together have put together a propaganda campaign to mislead the public. And I feel that it will set into uh, the people's mind eventually when the truth is more exposed. Now, you now I understand that uh, we're not going to talk about the religious or the um, emotional and psychological aspects of hemp. Uh, Correct, the, the recreational purposes. Yeah, we won't talk about that at all. We're going to talk about the uh, practical uh, and the profitable and productive yes sir and the ecological aspects of it absolutely uh, I don't know a lot about that I, I've read uh, books by uh, Jack Herrera I've listened gosh there's so many programs and so many articles these days everywhere you turn around you hear intelligent discussions about uh, hemp as a substitute for oil hemp as a substitute for wood pulp mm -hmm. uh, hemp as a source of energy uh, it's exciting the, the thing that I know most about, however, is the uh, puritanical crusade against hemp. Because, you know, I, I, I was in prison for four and a half years. For under an ounce, right? For the possession of two roaches which had been planted in my car by a, a generous, uh, overly generous policeman. Um, and uh, at one point I found myself in prison uh, facing like 50 years imprisonment. I was 50 years at the time, 50 years old. I mean, well, this is a strange Seven. series of events uh, for such a harmless uh, and even beneficial uh, situation to be charged uh, with so much time. Um, now, you escaped from there, too, didn't you? The first well, time. I did what any sensible 50-year-old would do if you're facing 50 years in prison for two roaches of marijuana that they planted in your car. Uh, the only common sense thing to do is to escape, and I did that and uh, made a few little B-movie adventures there. But, uh, there are there are many things in our society that have to be controlled and governed. Uh, uh, for example, oil. Look at the way oil is polluting and uh, 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 our atmosphere and uh, acid rain and so forth. Uh, guns should be controlled. Uh, I think uh, drugs like steroids should be controlled. I think there should be probably more control over alcohol and nicotine and the but of all the uh, of all of the uh, botanical vegetable species that the government is attacking, marijuana is the one they're going after. That's interesting, you know, I sometimes say that uh, hemp is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a democratic plant. 
because it was during the uh, democratic uh, uh, regime of J Jimmy Carter that uh, uh, hemp was legalized in uh, 14 states and uh, yeah. Carter himself and his cabinet wanted to decriminalize marijuana. And in 1980, you had uh, the Republicans coming in with a hard line, typical crush them, uh, down them. Just say no. Yeah. And uh, suddenly, the, the, the new drugs, which are everywhere, are drugs that I never heard of back in the 60s and the late 70s. Uh, things like crack and cocaine and steroids, uh, they, 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 base, they didn't exist. So I call them the Republican drugs. Hmm. Now, they're Republican drugs, why? Because Republicans are hardliners, like to feel tough and aggressive, and I'm number one, and we're going to go over there and we're going to, you know, kick butt. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to go out there and uh, loot a lot of savings and loans companies, and if you're going to go out there, you know, you've you got to have a lot of energy, and you've got a lot of self-confidence, right. uh, you've got to take big toot up with cocaine or a little steroids there. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, is the typical example of the... Uh, of the uh, steroid, we call him Conan the Republican, you know. <laughs> uh, whereas uh, uh, the one thing about the uh, the use of, of uh, hemp uh, as a uh, as a uh, as a drug, I've had to warn Republicans about this. If you're a Republican and you're a hardliner and you want to go out there and kick and scratch and get yourself to the top, and if you're in the army or the police or anything, like that, you want to have to be tough and mean and stay away from hemp. His hemp will turn you into a wimp. I mean, really. Look at Carter. He was believing in peace and love, and we... And all the wrong and things, right? All the terrible all, things. All the so. terrible things. Okay. You understand why? Right now, the government is spending much more money crushing the, the production of hemp. And another th thing that puzzles me about the insanity or the even the diabolical nature of the right-wing religious Republican situation uh, why do they go after the American farmers? They spend more money fighting hemp in this country. You know, in, in, in California, which is my home state, uh, uh, hemp was the number one agricultural uh, cash product. In Iowa, in Tennessee, and like... Back in Indiana, where I'm from, Yeah, as how well. many states? Uh, At least that we're aware of, 28 or more. Yeah, uh, honest farmers yeah. out there trying to make a living uh, growing hemp. And the government is out there arresting these good-hearted, you know, free enterprise farming agricultural America. And meanwhile, down in Colombia and Peru, these gangsters, these cocaine uh, cartel people, are making billions of dollars and uh, we're spending less money on them. I said, how come? Uh, I think you're probably right that uh, uh, they, uh, they don't want people to be using hemp to, because it would interfere with the oil mm -hmm. monopoly. Mm -hmm. It would uh, interfere with the uh, wood pulp monopoly. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I think there's something really religiously diabolic and evil about the right-wing Christians in this country who go after hemp because they hate people to have pro-choice and to make your own decisions about your life. And, uh, uh, they seem to be some of the people, too, who uh, overlook the medical aspects of Absolutely, hemp. yeah. Now, from your perspective and being, and being a psychiatrist as you are, you've had the opportunity to become acquainted with many different aspects of healing and some of, the, some of the more positive benefits of the uses of hemp. Could you share that, please? Well, there have been uh, an enormous number of studies that show that, uh, that hemp and cannabis uh, is uh, were extremely necessary for certain forms of glaucoma. You simply have to have it. Mm -hmm. but there, in many states, these, these fanatic anti-pleasure people are so afraid that the patient who's going blind might enjoy the experience <laughs> that the, you got to go blind, you die, but don't have a good time because the Republicans are in power. I mean, that's apparently the logic here. No, are they using it too for anorexia and for exactly. cancer? Exactly. AIDS. I mean, there's one terrible thing about hemp, and I don't want to get into the, uh, you know, the uh, use of marijuana, but I got to be honest with you, uh, there are some terrible side effects of uh, smoking or using uh, marijuana. One is, uh, uh, it's called refrigerator blackout. I mean, you get the munchies. Oh, okay. You know, you suddenly you smoke a <laughs> joint, and suddenly you there you are. The next thing you know, you've eaten uh, uh, nine pounds of fig noon, and say that that now that's that's dangerous. You gotta you gotta be careful there. Uh, on the other hand, if you're dying of cancer or uh, uh, malnourished because of stomach problems, and you don't have any appetite, hemp, of course, is the uh, logical and obvious uh, and natural uh, medicine to give you an appetite uh, to see you through that period. But again, uh, a good true Puritan 
would rather have you die. <laughs> and we also have a good meal while you're giggling. <laughs> <laughs> we also know that it's good for stress to calm you down. And from a viewpoint of a psychiatrist, is, it, is there any uh, benefits for someone who might be having emotional or mental problems as opposed to giving them like uh, uh, Valiums or some yeah. of these other stronger drugs that seem to be causing problems like Prozac and so on? Yeah. Well, number one, I don't want to come out like a smart, smart ass here and every psychological situation is individual and needs its own, uh, you know, its own pharma pharmacology, so I don't want to generalize. Um, but certainly, uh, the things about hemp is it's not addictive. It's extremely uh, harm. It doesn't have any of the side effects of uh, many of the uh, euphorics uh, and the antidepressants uh, that are approved uh, and that uh, doctors' prescriptions will give you. So, uh, yeah, there's a. Uh, you see, the thing about uh, religious fanaticism is that the crazier, the nuttier, the wilder, and almost the more nonsensical the belief, the more you hang on to it. So that. Uh, I've debated for many years a man who was the head of the DEA for about uh, five oh. years. His name is Peter Bensinger. Yeah, she has. And I can't believe him. Uh, he's going after hemp, and he's trying to say that, oh, uh, hemp. One, <laughs> they gave a lot of some some mice some hemp, and it made male mice, teenage male mice, and it made their breasts grow a little. So he's saying, <laughs> why, you college boys, uh, you see if I'm going. At, why is he going at the <laughs> real problems of crack babies in the, in the inner city and uh, alcohol, which is our number one drug here, mm -hmm. and uh, nicotine, you know, half a million people die a year from that. Here's this guy blathering on about the, <laughs> the dangers of, of, uh, of uh, I don't know, I, he never did mention whether, uh, whether uh, marijuana would make girls' breasts bigger, but I don't even want to get into that. The whole thing is okay, so Now, you've sick. also had a few debates with uh, G. Gordon Liddy, too. Yeah, that's right. I had that, yeah. And uh, he seems to think that uh, marijuana, i.e. hemp, is one of the, uh, the plants that's going to lead to a complete social breakdown in our structure of government. And you seem well, to Well, I know Gordon Liddy. Uh, I've been debating him. I've known him for years, over 25 years. I know exactly how his mind works. And like a good army man, like a good military man, like a good policeman, like a good follower of his leader, uh, Richard Nixon. Okay. Gordon Liddy has never had one unauthorized thought in his life. <laughs> so he, he, he reads the, the line, so he knows that. But, but the LSD makes you jump out of windows. Uh, marijuana uh, makes you, uh, what is that? I forget what it they, is. They say it's the gateway drug. Yeah, oh, it's the gateway drug. That's yeah. right, it's the gateway yeah. drug. Yeah. So, uh, um, I, see, I, I must say here, and I don't want to offend anyone. And if you're a uh, if you're a deeply uh, a devout Christian, I want you to turn your uh, TV off now. But uh, I feel that there's a great uh, problem in this country, in a violation of our civil liberties and personal rights on the basis of uh, the federal government interfering with women's bodies uh, about abortion and uh, the uh, these insane war on drugs. Because the war on drugs is a war on Americans. It's not a war on Russians or evil communists and all that. You may, you know, it's a war against uh, 40 or 50 million of us marijuana smokers in this country, which in a way seems like a weird thing that uh, uh, the majority in Congress should suddenly declare war on 30 million otherwise tax-paying, uh, mm -hmm. reasonably productive uh, uh, American citizens. Um, the, uh, I think that uh, the basis is religion. Okay. And basis is that you're not allowed to choose what you want to do. It's like any fanatic religious, uh, they'll tell you, you can't use contraceptives because right. you can't enjoy sex. <laughs> and if you do uh, 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 conceive a baby, you have no choice about whether you want to uh, bring this baby, when you can handle this baby. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true about, uh, about uh, the choice of, uh, of your own uh, self-medication. And uh, I personally believe that uh, the war on drugs is the worst attack on American freedom that we've uh, experienced in, uh, in 200 years. You know, this is the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. It was in 1791 that they passed those 10 wonderful bills. And the basically, what most people don't realize is that the Bill of Rights in the Constitution is designed to protect the individual against the government. 
So the government can't come into your house without a search warrant. The government can't put uh, soldiers in your house. The government can't force you to, uh, to testify against yourself. The government can't tell you what to read or write. The government can't tell you how to worship your own God. The government can't tell you how to read, mind your own business. So um, uh, it, it's both ironic and I think it's also very hopeful that in the year uh, 1991, in the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights, uh, this hemp movement is, is growing. And I want to tell you it is growing. I give it's a lot nice of the, to the talks to, uh, to students in colleges and uh, the awareness of the insanity Good. of the marijuana laws is becoming, uh, I think, ob more and more obvious. That tells us that perhaps we are finally making an impact across the United States and perhaps around the world. We are really enjoying this interview and we'll be right back after this. Thank you. Welcome back to Time for Hemp. Today on our show we have the distinguished Dr. Timothy Leary. Timothy, I think you've been aware of some of the changes in the laws here within the American uh, structure of Congress and all the way down to dog catcher opinions from Nancy Reagan swaying our opinions to just say no. Uh, well, I have a motto uh, in, in a bumper sticker and a t-shirt that says, just say K-N-O-W, no. Think for yourself and don't believe what Nancy Reagan says. Don't believe what I say. <laughs> Think for yourself and question authority. And, uh, <laughs> you, uh, well, because of this conservatism, though, some of the laws that were established uh, during the Carter administration, such as um, decriminalization of, of marijuana, etc., are beginning to go back to another era, back be when the mines were narrow. In Alaska, they've changed the laws back to stiffen the laws. Colorado, we are going through down. a period now. It's, uh, uh, what happened in the 60s and 70s, we had in this country a, a classic renaissance. Now, read the history books. A renaissance is a period when there's a sudden surge in self-expression, in the rights of the individual, a loosening of the control of authority, a questioning of a religious dogma, and then a lurch forward. It, this is always followed by a hard-lined retreat, so that it's uh, at the same time that uh, there has, uh, in the last 10 years in America, under Reagan and uh, Bush, been this very repressive hard line Look what's happened to the rest of the world. Um, you know, in, in Russia just uh, three weeks ago, when they had that uh, coup, and then uh, a bunch of young people in, in Moscow protected Yeltsin and, and stopped the tanks. You know what it was that was stopping the tanks? It was young uh, Russians, students, who were throwing flowers at the tanks. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Does that it? sound familiar? Sounds they learned familiar. that absolutely from uh, <laughs> the American uh, uh, in the 60s and 70s when we were questioning the authority of, uh, of Johnson and, and uh, Nixon and stopping the Vietnam War. Uh, uh, another thing that was amusing about the, uh, the Russian Revolution, and, and it's very connected with this, the three men who, uh, young men who got shot by the tanks and were immediately promoted to the highest office or honor mm -hmm. of the Soviet Union, the highest order of, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the land, they were three hippies. <laughs> and they had to, one was a Grateful Deadhead. <laughs> and one like heavy uh, metal rock. And uh, they let their hair grow. And they all had learned to uh, smoke a hashish in um, Afghanistan. <laughs> and indeed, they, they were trying to stop the tanks because it was their brothers and their friends and their colleagues who were in the tanks because the, uh, there was, it turned out that the, uh, the Soviet soldiers that had been sent to Afghanistan hated the idea of going down there and, and uh, killing uh, Afghani people for no apparent reason. So that I'm very proud of the fact that although in America we've had this, uh, this uh, very predictable but very violent and mean and nasty uh, Puritanism and uh, you can't smoke cigarettes, and uh, there's, uh, they're censoring uh, rock and roll records, and mm -hmm. they're censoring books. Uh, uh, now, one by one, they're going down the list of personal freedoms. At the same time, the basic American freedoms, uh, which we uh, set going in the 60s, are appearing in the Soviet Union. And, uh, I go over to Japan. And ours are reversing, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. It seems like the hemp issue could be one of the uh, last strong divides that we face as a, a body of people in America. One, everybody seems to have an opinion, everybody seems so upset. Make it I legal, think that uh, the hemp issue is the place where you can draw the line. And uh, anyone who's watching this program, in, in your city, there's obviously a, uh, a channel which is carrying this message. Uh, get in touch with the people that are producing this show in your locality 
and uh, start embarrassing your local politicians by asking them, for example, of, uh, of your congressmen and assembly men and women, how many of you smoked marijuana when you were young, huh? Mm -hmm. we, we know that um, about 80% of the members of Congress under the age of 50 were, were smoking marijuana. How come they could do it and mm -hmm. uh, we can't do it? There's I even been reported rumors that people all the way up to the White House may have been involved Not with it. The White House? Oh my God! <laughs> you, you do know that Ronald Reagan uh, uh, smoked marijuana because that came out in the book by Kitty Kelly. When uh, Ronald Reagan was governor of California, I uh, used to smoke marijuana. In the, and you know, when you think about it, when you think about it, that explains everything about poor Ronnie Reagan. <laughs> it shows you why Republicans should not smoke marijuana. I why mean, is that? Well, the amnesia, the forgetfulness, <laughs> the short-term memory loss, the cheerful, hey, uh, what's wrong, baby, everything's fine, even though the, the country's going down. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, uh, the long uh, naps after lunch, you know, I mean, uh, Ronnie, uh, come on, uh, leave marijuana alone. Uh, now, by, by the way, both uh, Ronnie's uh, his children, um, Ron Jr. and Betty Davis, uh, of course, uh, kind of silly. The point I'm making here about the place I think to take a stand, uh, abortion rights is just one place, but uh, um, uh, marijuana, you can do it, the way to do it is through humor, right? Letters to the editor. Uh, challenge uh, politicians as to whether they really think that alcohol is more dangerous than marijuana, and if so, why? And uh, on that very common sense, logical, friendly, uh, humorous uh, approach. You've always been one for the wit and to tickle people with a laugh and make them think, I've noticed. You do what you can to stimulate the mind in a fun way. That's the aim of the game. I think that's oftentimes why you've been so misconstrued by your contemporaries. They, they can't take a joke. <laughs> well, uh, good. I'm glad I misunderstood. Uh, the, uh, the number one way to bring down any repressive authoritarian regime is irreverence. And I pride myself, I think I have a very high IQ, that is irreverence quotient. Okay. And I have been uh, a leading dissenter in this country uh, during the, uh, the uh, Johnson administration, during the Nixon administration. I'm proud to have been, uh, I'm proud that Mi Richard Nixon called me the most dangerous man in America. I mean, after all, what an honor. And, uh, yeah, really. <laughs> uh, and I want to, uh, urge those of you who uh, just think for yourself and uh, the hemp issue is a wonderful issue to uh, bring people together because it, it, it brings together ecology, it brings together uh, a substitute for petroleum which of course is the re real re Republican addictive drug. It's uh, such an ecologically uh, helpful uh, situation. Uh, above all, it prevents us from cutting down the Amazon rainforest uh, for uh, wood pulp because or uh, for um, uh, or cutting down for fiber because we all know that uh, hemp is uh, by far mm -hmm. the best uh, material so that uh, there's something that's very wonderful about a plant and, and uh, the human beings kind of rally behind a plant. Those five wonderful leaves that kind of represent uh, mm -hmm. wonderful uh, and the great thing about it is the right-wing Republicans and the right-wing religious fanatics hate it. <laughs> and you know why they hate it? Because it makes people feel free and makes feel people free, feel uh, funny and, and, they, and uh, independent and uh, now I would if, if, they, if they hate it, there's got to be something good about it. That's my logic. I would shoot myself if I didn't ask this one last question and that oh is... Oh my gosh, I, don't do no, that. Because no, no. so many people say, you had Timothy Leary there, why didn't you ask him? And we have really tried to st shy away from the recreational uses so we don't want to make it a long re respond, but do you feel that when consumed as a recreational uh, plant, that it can bring you more in tune with your own being, with your own self, maybe put things into better perspective? Or is it like liquor, when you drink it, you're just so out of touch that you don't know what's going on? Well, I spent uh, 40 years scientifically studying uh, the various botanical vegetable gifts that the plant queendom has given the mammalian animal kingdom. And uh, no question of in my mind that uh, the mushrooms and marijuana are the greatest gifts given to us by the uh, vegetable, uh, the, the plant, the kingdom. <coughs> you can misuse marijuana. Uh, it does make you, uh, get, uh, there, are, there are like th three dangerous side effects of marijuana. One is you kind of see too much and that makes you kind of a little, uh, a little spacey because you know you, you, you're, you just do see so much. And the second is short-term memory loss, like you forget what you were talking about. And the third dangerous side effect 
I forget. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, don't ever smoke marijuana. Use marijuana if you have. If you're going to go to school, uh, if you're going to uh, do anything that requires attention, concentration. It's just absolutely stupid. Do not use marijuana. Marijuana should be used for moments of uh, of. Uh, of real celebration and the glorification and uh, the one thing about marijuana is it's not a loner it's it's, it's a something that you do with somebody else okay the idea that someone would go off and smoke marijuana by themselves i mean it's ridiculous uh, kind of like yeah, kind of like doing this talk show that we've had the chance to do today yeah i want to thank you very much for being a guest on our show i'm being told by the side uh, people here on the sides that we need to wrap it up and i tell you You've really had, you've given us a lot of food for our minds. Well, you I'm all behind your cause, and it's an honor and pleasure to be with you, and thanks to the crew who did a great job. I'd like to have you back on again sometime. Okay. Thank you. And the next time you see me, remember that you'll know it's time for him. So please join in, look around, tell your friends, get copies of the show, send it off to governors, send it off to senators, send it off to people whose minds are closed, tell your friends about it. If you are a victim of this uh, war on drugs, and feel that bringing your story to us might enlighten it to the nation where we can help make a change, please let us know. If there's people in your community who need to be focused on, please let us know. And if you have a challenge regarding any of our statements, remember Jack Harrow once said, $10,000 to anybody who comes on to this show and disproves our findings. Jack Harrow stands behind that statement. It's an honor to have him on our show. And again, I'll look for you the next time. Thank you.